Isaiah chapter 64. Third John, the 64th book of the Bible. Oh, that the wouldest rend the heavens. Split the heavens. Rend the tear open. That that wouldest come down. That's second advent. Splitting the heavens coming down. That the mountain might now drop at thy presence. You know, I'm going to say it over and over and over. If you don't read the Old Testament, you miss much. Because we can't get into what we're reading right now. Because Exodus is going to happen all over again. Exodus, the second book of the Bible. The moment that when, when Israel came to Mount Sinai, and God came down on Mount Sinai, when you read about that mountain on fire, the, the, the massive earthquakes and the smoke, that's what's going to happen here. The fact is, when Jesus Christ comes back, not only is the book of Exodus played out in the tribulation period, but here's what the Jews are supposed to speak about. Them hearing God's voice, then testifying to what God did at Mount Sinai. This sounds familiar. And the fact is what America is doing to her history is changing her history. It won't be it won't be known later on in the future how long the Lord tarries. But this is history not changed. It's written in the Bible. It's recorded in the Bible. What we're reading, all the Jews have a copy. Now, the Jews don't have the New Testament, but they have what we're reading right now, and they get back to, to, the, to, the, to the, the law and the prophets in the tribulation period. They're going to see. They're going to see their history replayed, that Jehovah's coming, Jesus Christ. When now melting fire burneth. That's Exodus. The fire has caused the waters to boil. That's some thought. Plane. And uh, we're going away from scholars. I'm not. A, I'm a doctor, Doctor Sally William Hayward. I have a, a theology degree. I am much as a doctor as any scholar. The the heavens are a water. It's a vast deep that astronauts go into a spaceship. And they need oxygen tanks. There's a great Leviathan up there. I know the old world maps drew the dragon in the Atlantic Ocean, but that's not where the, the dragon is. He's up there above our head, principalities in high places. When Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to boil that deep. Why? Because you got Apollo up there. You got Rover up there. You got the dragon up there. You know, the latest spacecraft being launched. From Florida, where I live, the dragon. You got the internationals. You got to boil all that away. Really, it's above our head. There's a whole bunch of, of, of junk and crap and metal parts and, and all that littering around our planet. And they're worried about you. You throw a piece of paper on the highway. Let's go after NASA and all the space agency for all the junk they're putting across our heads. They've got to launch that space shuttle at the right time, and they got to protect that space shuttle not from the not only from the heat of the of the atmosphere, but from all the space crap. Study that next time they try to give you a littering fee. Say, I want to bring NASA and all them into court. All the littering fee above our heads. They just recently had you know one of the Chinese debris rockets came falling to the earth. You know. God's got to melt that whole thing. And that's important. That wasn't a rabbit trail. To make thy name known to thy adversary. The enemies of Jude. The enemies of Jesus Christ. That the nations may tremble at thy presence. Now look at this. It says make thy name known. That's interesting. Because let's go to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19. Let's see what happens when Jesus Christ comes. Revelation 19 verse 11. I saw the heavens open, rending the heavens, and behold, a white horse. For every fairy tale story has got the prince on the white horse. And he that sat on it was called faithful and true, and righteous does he judge and make war. His eyes were aflame as fire, his head were as many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. Go back to Revelation, I mean, go back to Isaiah. What's it say? To make thy name known to thy adversaries. Who's that? The name of Jesus has been erased. Not when Jesus comes back.
Not when Jesus comes back. His name, unknown, will be known. When thou this, oh, wait a minute. When thou this uh, terrible thing, which we looked not for. What's the terrible thing? We read about that last night. Trampling people. The loving great God. Is in his horse is stomping on his enemy. Blood is shattering. Blood is splurring. People are being killed, and their blood and their bodies are being trampled, and the bones are being broken. Run back to Daniel, and the Daniel's dead. Not with Daniel in the dead, but all the presidents that tried to deceive Daniel and get him killed. And the lions broke every bone. And had a great slaughter of the people and their families and all. Go back and read. Daniel's coming back too. The story of Daniel and Daniel himself. The lion, the tribe of Judah, is going to snatch up all those bodies. He ain't going to chew them. He's going to stomp on them. And all the liberals and scholars are going to be, oh man, that's God. Yeah, that's God. That's that little baby that was in the manger stomping on human beings, the adversary. Plain and simple. They're not going to believe it. Since the beginning of the world, men have not heard. They don't want to listen. It's been there. Nor perceived by ear, neither by eye seen. You say, what's that one? Well, I'll tell you what that one is. I'll tell you, that's six years of preaching at a farmer's market in Daytona Beach, Florida, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to see it. They want to call the police. They want the preacher gone. We don't want to hear that. I mean, we, we, we've we heard it for the last, last couple of weeks. They hear it every single week the same old thing. But I got to hear your your race car guy announcing the, the, the car is making left-hand turns, left-hand turns. I got to hear that. I gotta hear my neighbors blasting their, their, their uh, theomenic music. I've gotta hear your concert. I gotta hear your 24 hour race we have here. I gotta hear you baseball, you know, like stupid guy hitting a stupid ball into a stupid outfit. I gotta hear that. But they don't wanna hear about Jesus, though they've heard about you. They go across the radio dial, Jesus, and they turn the radio dial. They drive, I mean, not today so much, but they used to drive by signboards of churches where you used to proclaim the scriptures. That we have on our car, we have multiple scriptural bumper stickers that have offended churches and Christians. I, I was told by a pastor in a church uh, that. People will be offended to park their car next to our car. Christians in a Baptist church can't park next to that car. And with the heart man believes on the righteous, with the mouth confession made on stuff, where is your stand in Christ then? Even Christians don't, <coughs> Christians don't want to hear it. Oh God, <laughs> that's going to be the expression, oh God, not oh Buddha. Not old Mary. Forget about Mary. They say when John F. Kennedy uh, was, was, was killed in the backseat of that car, they said that uh, uh, Mrs. Kennedy cried, Oh, God. They didn't go to Mary. Jackie said, Oh, God. Jackie went right upstairs. Never mind the, the pity block prayers. She went right upstairs. Oh, God. Beside thee. What he has prepared for him that waited on him. And I apologize, my eyes are blurry from my medication. It's kind of hard for me to see things. But uh, again, a few weeks ago at the farmer's market, I was preaching. And they were upset. And one guy asked me, what do you know? And I went for 45 minutes, what I know. And I was, I was preaching about heaven. Now let's talk about there's no hospitals, no police, no crime, no death. There's perfect peace. There's just the, 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 the river of life, the trees of life, the throne of God, the emerald uh, rainbow green around God's throne, God the Father. God. And I said, you know, those trees, 
And then there's something I said that really stumped me, Stu stumps me today. And, and this is a, prepare for him. What has he prepared for him that waiteth for him? What is the smell of heaven going to be like? You ain't going to smell tobacco. You ain't going to smell alcohol. You ain't going to smell a city dump. You ain't going to smell death. What is heaven going to smell like? The Bible says that, that that rainbow around God's throne is an emerald. What's that green going to look like? A holy green. What is that gold we're going to walk on on the street of gold? What are all those gems that garnish the city walls of New Jerusalem? What are we going to look like? I'm going to see my mother. I'm going to see my children. I'm going to see some of my family members. What are they going to look like? What are they going to see me like? What are those crowds going to be like? What are What's it going to be like when, when there are Christians wearing crowns and Christians who don't ever have crowns that made fun of the Christians that are wearing crowns? What's, what are you going to see? What's the tree of life like? What on actually does Adam and Eve look like? What's Jesus look like? What's those wounds in his hands look like? We can't fathom heaven. And even Paul makes a, a direct in his writings, can't compare it to nothing. So what he has prepared for him that waited, we can't even describe it. Thou meetest him that rejoices and worketh righteousness. Thou that remembers thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth. We got an, there's an angry God. That loving, kind, wonderful, great, holy God gets angry. He has things he hates. Why is he wroth? For we have sinned. And when we sin against God, we anger God. Don't give me God hates the sin and loves the sinner. Not by that expression. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mom hates the idea that you just ate every single cookie that was for her meeting tomorrow. Mom just loves, you know, she just hates the idea all her cookies are good. But she just absolutely displeased with you. That she's going to make a whole new bunch of batch of cookies just because you ate the cookies for you. Really? No. Mom is angry that you ate all the cookies and the proper family standing. You're not going to be too happy when daddy gets home. Because daddy's going to hate the sin that all the cookies were eaten. And daddy's going to have to deal with the sinner that ate all the cookies. And then after that, he'll wrap his arms around you and say, hey, this, this is why I had to do that. That's one of the troubles with, you know, just say this prayer and, you know, <laughs> you got to deal with the sin and the sinner. Because salvation involves repenting of your sins. And I don't want to go to hell. And how do you go to hell? Because you sinned against God. And you rejected the Lamb of God that has paid for your sin. And that angers God in thy countenance. And we shall be saved. That's the nation of Israel. As a group, corporate, as a nation right now, they're, they're not. Now individual Jews can be saved. But corporately? But we... Israel, and you can apply this to the Christian and all mankind. We all, see the all, all Jews, Gentiles, and Christians, as an unclean thing. And in the law, unclean, you don't touch. I remember a message I heard one time about this. You are as an unclean thing. You're a piece of crap. It's unclean. 
The only thing that will touch crap is Beelzebub. And he said dung beetles. The great message I heard. You are a pile of crap. God can't use crap. Some crap can be fertilizer, but other crap, not good fertilizer. And all our righteousness. Look, look how good I am. I give money to charities. I help others. I go to church. I write cards to these people. I give my clothes to this organization. I help these people. I'm a goody, goody, goody. Our righteousness, there's filthy rag. Now that man said that unclean things is your crap. You know what that man said about the filthy rags? In the original Hebrew across. He says that's the filthy rags of the women from their menstrual periods. He says you don't want that to be hanging around. You want to throw that out. He said, I'll, he's in the message I heard, he said, I'll tell you about those filthy rags. He said, and he said, you know, you've got to get America out of the Bible. And the man was a missionary in one of the island nations. And he said, women who had their time a month were separated from the family. And the law for the Jewish person said, that woman is unclean. Anything that woman touches is unclean. You had to separate that woman or the women from the men and everybody. And he said in the island nations that he was a minister, uh, uh, missionary. The women had their own little huts. And no, no one else could go in there. Only the women, the women that that time. And he said those unclean, filthy rags. Oh yeah, everybody, you know, they want to. Uh, you know, what was the last time you? The guy was quite cruel, but true. He said, "What's the?" Oh, this is my daughter, and th this is her first filthy rag, like the first dollar you made it at your business. You don't do that. He says, you throw it in the garbage. And they say, when he, the missionary said, they burn it. <laughs> and whether you're a filthy rag as a menstrual cloth, or you're a filthy rag in, in an automobile uh, garage, <laughs> You got to take those raw those rags in, in the automobile. You got to put them in a special container because they can cause fire. They can cause revic, and then you got to get rid of them right away. And whatever that filthy rag is, you get rid of it. You dispose of it. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on Him should not perish. You know what perish is? God throws it out. And if you don't have the righteousness of Jesus Christ, God throws you out. You go into the incinerator. You know what God's incinerator is? It's hell. It's hell fire. You know what they did with those, those rags of those women? Those cloths of those women? No, they burn it. I, that, was, that was a great picture. Quite cruel. Many of your modern Christians wouldn't be able to handle that. What would they be in hell? He spoke about hell. Oh, That was a great illustration. Those menstrual cords are filled with blood, but not the right blood. You take that Jewish law, huh? you have nothing to, as totally unclean as the poop. Yeah, you know what the Bible says about the poop? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's, let's see. Deuteronomy. Where was I yesterday? Let me see where I was. Hold on. I'm not going to go find it. I know I'm not. Oh, I, let me try that. Hold on. Let me try this one. I'll show you. So it's Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 23. This just came to mind. I just read this last night. Hey, I'm right here at Deuteronomy 23. Uh, where is it? Deuteronomy 23, 13. And the Bible says... And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon. It shall be when thou e ease thyself abroad. That's going potty. 
Number two. Thou shalt dig thereup, and shalt turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. Number two. Unclean thing. So what we're reading about. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up the enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing, the doo-doo, caca, poo-poo, crap, in thee, and turn away from thee. Do you know what would turn God out of the Israeli camp? God's walking through the camp. I'm going to give him victory. Oh, crap. All right, bye, guys. Somebody didn't bury their doo-doo. God says, out of here. When you bury that, I'll be back. And run that right back to where we are now. <laughs> you know what God says when he sees your crap? <laughs> out of here, angry. Let's clean that up. Let's bury that. Bury it in the blood of Jesus Christ. God, I got a bloody filthy rag. Get that thing away from me. Will you put that thing in the garbage? Don't flush it in the garbage. Put it in the garbage. You know, it's funny because I've worked grocery stores and I've had to clean women's bathrooms. Not that I go in women's bathrooms. I, but, you know, I've seen they got a special reciprocal to put those things in the garbage. Even keep that separate from the regular garbage. That's something. So God doesn't think too well of your righteousness. And somebody, a lot of people always come up to me. I'm good. You know what God just said? You're full of crap or you're a filthy rag. Now you tell that to an American woman, she's going to get offended. But what does it say in black and white? I can imagine what the modern Bible is saying. Who cares what they say? They're of the devil. We all do fade like a leaf. That's life. Just like a leaf. Falls off a tree. Falls on the ground. Turns brown. Turns black. And then our iniquities like the wind. <laughs> what a, on, here it is. There it goes. Have taken us away. Away from God. <coughs> I apologize for my lips. My throat. There is none that calls upon thy name. Oh, I'm searching for God. Yeah, too, I was a Catholic searching for God in a Catholic church. You're not going to find him there. If, if people search for God, when God said no one searches upon the name, why did Jesus say go in all the world and preach the gospel if they're seeking God? Why don't you just say, hey, you know, just, just wait for them to come to God. Now, I have been in countless Baptist churches and a few other churches. I have sat in the assembly. I have not ever had seen yet one person walk in that church on their own merit and say, I want to get that. I guarantee it's probably happened. But it's rare. Listen, before I met Jesus Christ, April 25th, 1987, I went for God in all the wrong places. If I was truly seeking God, why didn't I find him? Because the God I was looking for was not the holy, righteous God of the Bible. And even as Christians, we, we go looking for God, but we go bargain shopping for God. We want a God that will agree with our sins. And you're not going to meet God, a holy and righteous God. You know, God, you know, I really love, but, you know, I like to hold on to this sin. And you're not going to meet God in the church where they hang on to Easter and Christmas, which has nothing to do with God. And don't say, oh, God came in the presence. You're telling me a holy and righteous God showed up where you got the devil. And a celebration of the devil. Well, we don't keep Halloween. He stirs himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us because of sins. Amen. 
And when we seriously want and find out the truth about God and want to believe the truth of God, then, hey, okay, here he is. Has consumed us because of our iniquity. What's all the 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 the, the the judgment, what's all the, the core of fires, what's all the floods, what's all the fire, what's all the hurricane, what's all the earthquakes, what's all the flooding, what's all the death? Because of the iniquity. Well, you know, there, there are innocent people that die because Adam and Eve sinned. Boy, we have to pay. Because we're born them. They're our parents. How can you blame God for death of little children and all that, but you don't go blaming the mothers who get involved in serious drug abuse and their children are born in drug abuse? Oh, isn't that just a shame? No, oh, your mother, you go there. Why'd you kill your baby? Why you have a problem with your baby? You know, you made your baby. Why don't you act like that towards them mothers? You do that to God. And I've met people who've done that to God. Ain't God's fault we sin. Yeah, we're all sinners. That's the problem. We're all sinners. Jesus Christ will redeem us. There'll be a time there'll be no more sin at all. And we'll be in a happy, wonderful paradise called New Jerusalem. If you do what God tells you to do. You won't be angry and bitter and all that. You ain't pleasing God. and That ain't the right track. But now. Lord, thou art our father. Again, we talked about that with Israel last night. Jesus set that stage. Jesus kept saying, my father, my father, my father. He was separating himself from the way the condition of Israel was. When he sat down with the, with the 12 disciples, what did he say? Our father. You got that? Oh, yeah, you got the Roman Catholic part. Did he not sit down with the disciples and say, all right, Jesus, yes. How do we pray? Our Father. Pharisee, Sadducee, my Father in heaven. Well, who do you think you are? Baba? You're of your father, the devil. Did you get that? When he was with the group of people, our Father. The Pharisees, your Father. Jesus, my Father. Christians, I'm born again, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. My father. You know how many times I used father, father, father as a Catholic? And he wasn't my father. Satan was my father. Israel is going to cry out to God one day, Father. Jesus said, call no man father on the earth. There's going to be one father. And God is their groom. Because God will marry Israel. God will be the husband and the father of the bride. We are the clay. <laughs> We're just a piece of pottery. We're just mud. And from dirt and dust, God made man. Thou art our potter. There's Jeremiah coming up. And we all the work of thy hand. God, you created us. God, you made us. God, it's you. You know what some you know what some people say today? We're a product of evolution. Even the Catholic Church and major denominations disregard Genesis 1. And I did a commentary report on that. I worked on one whole night on religions that should but deny the creation of God, Genesis 1 1. And I don't know what other, and I don't get about, I don't know what Eastern religions teach about creation. I don't know what the Chinese teach about creation, but they don't teach about God the Father of the Bible. Do you know salvation relies on the virgin birth and God the Creator? You can't have a man call upon God, you know, I believe in evolution. Hebrew says you got to believe that he is. As much as the guy tells me, I, uh, no, no, Jesus, uh, Mary had, had relations with Joseph or somebody. There's no way that Jesus was a miracle birth and a virgin birth and all that. Would you like to bow your head and say this prayer? Uh-uh. 
How many times people say, oh, you want to pray? You want to get... And I wonder how many people deny the, the creation of God. How many people deny the virgin birth of Jesus Christ? Some people say that Jesus died, did not die. He passed out on the cross. And when he laid them on that cold stone in, in the tomb, he up from the grave. Are you going to have that person say a prayer for salvation? That's not the gospel. I'm trying to help you people out. Be not raw, very sore, tribulation. O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. I'll wipe away their sins, I'll, I'll cleanse them, I'll give them a new heart, and their sins I'll remember no more. Look at that. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. There's the Jews again. There's the second advent. There's a tribulation. There's them calling out to God at the end of seven years. Verses 1 through 3 is the second advent, but that's the Jewish prayer. Oh, they were looking forward to Calvary. How come, you don't, how come they don't ever say they're looking forward to the second advent? You think they're in right now? They think they're, you think they're thinking about the second advent right now? They're trying to get Hamas from stopping the missiles. Oh, look at this one. The holy cities. Not the holy city. Holy cities. Got a problem with that one? You're going to go to the holy land? <laughs> no, I'm going to go to the holy cities in the millennium. Are a wilderness. <laughs> Those cities that will be glorious, wonderful, without curse in the millennium right now are a wilderness. Zion. Is a wilderness. Not when Jesus comes and settles down. Jerusalem is desolate. And it's going to be desolate during Babylon. It's going to be desolate after Titus. It's going to be desolate at the Antichrist. Our holy and our beautiful house. Oh, there's the temple. There's those lovely Baptist churches. Where our fathers praise thee is burned up with fire. Put that above your door of your church. That's the Lord's house. It's beautiful. It's great. It's burnt up. It's burnt up today. Come on. Really, again, let's say you got all these Lord houses involved with Christmas and Easter. Really? Yeah, there's the time in that. They had the Lord's house in, in one of the kings. They also said they had the tents of the Sodomites. Also had another altar. Also shut up the doors of the house. And they were looking to the sun, moon, and stars. Yeah, that's today's lad to see in church age. With fire and our pleasant things are laid waste. That's going to be the state of Jerusalem from sin. That's the state of Israel from sin. That's the state of the judgment seat of Christ due to sin. Ashes. Will thou refrain thyself for these things? Lord, are you ever going to come and rescue us? Oh, Lord, will thou hold thy peace? There's no peace. Until the Lord come and afflict us very sore. Tribulation period. There it is. There it is.